कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की In the news tonight, police officers suspected of planting drugs bailed. Shooting videos on buses threat to safety. And government gets emergency loan from Japan. From the studios of FBC Suva, Atera Lendua. Ulubanaka, Fiji. Five police officers who allegedly planted a bag containing methamphetamine in a vehicle appeared in the Suva Magistrates Court this afternoon. Police Constable Rusiate Tunga Ralase, Simeone Basulu, Inspector Apisalome Besikula, Samuela Antonio, and Constable Orisi Tukana are jointly charged with one count of conspiracy to defeat justice. Pranita Prakash has more. Police constables Ralase and Basulu face an additional charge of abuse of office for allegedly arresting the complainant without any lawful basis and in abuse of the office, which was an arbitrary act. It is alleged that on 25th April last year, the five conspired with each other knowingly and maliciously accused a 23-year-old of an offence under the Illicit Drugs and Control Act of 2005. On the same day, without any lawful basis, Ralase and Basulu arrested the complainant in the abuse of the authority of the office, which was arbitrary and prejudicial. They have been released on $500 bail bond on their own recognition. They have been ordered not to interfere with any of the witnesses and not to re-offend while on bail. The matter has been adjourned to 23rd April for plea. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Land Transport Authority and the Consumer Council are urging bus operators to be more stern with the behavior of the traveling public that can endanger others' lives. The LTA says while drivers are responsible for public service, travelers must also exercise certain responsibilities. Goretandulala reports the concerns come after some videos shot especially on buses are circulating on social media. The two bodies, through close collaboration, are engaging bus companies in talks to ensure they find an amicable solution. Whilst it is the responsibility of the bus operators to make sure that this does not happen in the buses, uh, there is a certain sense of responsibilities uh, of from the consumers or from the travelers as well because they should know by doing that they are putting the lives of their loved one at risk. The Land Transport Authority and the Consumer Council of Fiji will be working together to address grievances raised by the public and the public service vehicle operators. The platform will allow both parties to also address issues relating to safety concerns. We can assist them where possible but ultimately they are responsible for the conduct of the driver and the driver uh, similarly is responsible for the conduct of the passengers. We should not be policing the passengers, they should be you know, sitting in the right seat and, and travel home safely. The Fiji Bus Operators Association reiterated that it's important for the public to learn proper etiquette when travelling in public transport and to avoid any unruly behaviour. Kore Tandulala, FBC News. Kuroi Tandulala joins us live now. Kuroi, how will the travelling public and public transport operators ensure their concerns are heard? Thanks, Ate. The, the Land Transport Authority and the Consumer Council of Fiji today signed a memorandum of understanding on bus complaints procedure. Now, the MOU will provide both parties, the travelling public as well as PSV operators, a platform where they can raise their grievances and also ensure that proper discussions are held with relevant authorities to address their grievances or issues. Now, this will bode well for both the public and the drivers as well, as in the past, public have raised their concerns previously regarding certain behavior or unruly behavior or rude behavior rather of drivers and these doesn't is isn't always addressed and now vice versa as well drivers have had unruly behaviors of passengers and in certain instances where the Fiji Bus Operators Association had highlighted late last year with regards to 
major sporting events where the members of the public or passengers in a, in a bus, they were rocking the bus, swaying it side to side. And also, some people were found standing on top of a moving bus, posing a great, great risk, brother. And this process will allow both parties to raise the grievances with relevant authorities, ensure that they have proper discussions, uh, find amicable solutions to address this concern. Now, the authority is stressing the need for both parties to ensure a level of professionalism is carried out when they're at work for drivers and for public when they're traveling in the bus to ensure they avoid any unnecessary risk of life. Ateva. Thank you, Koroi. Prime Minister Burengi Baini Marama today signed an agreement with the Japanese government for an emergency loan of $200 million as part of the COVID-19 response to revitalize the local economy. Baini Marama says the loan will allow for further strengthening of the COVID-19 defenses, particularly the public health systems. He adds it will also equip the frontline workers as Fiji prepares to step through the door for post-pandemic future. Kritika Kumar reports. The Prime Minister says the key for post-pandemic future is vaccine and Fiji is already advocating for the equitable access to the vaccine. We cannot wait on the wealthy, wealthy world's recovery. We must see our people protected alongside Americans, alongside Australians and Kiwis and the Japanese and of course the rest of the developed world. Anything short of that would be a moral and medical failure. The Prime Minister also highlighted that the deferment of the 2020 Olympics was marked the most sobering. But your plans to host the Global Games this summer in Tokyo gives us all hope that uh, life as we knew it is within reach. And we look forward to watching Team Fiji compete in our chance to defend our gold medal in Rugby Sevens, of course. Japanese Ambassador to Fiji, Kawakami Fumihiro, says this loan is the largest in Japan's history of aid and assistance to Fiji. Japan will provide a total of funding, funding of approximately 200 million Fijian dollars, which equates to approximately 12% of Fiji's total revenue of this fiscal year. The $200 million loan comes with concessions such as 0.01% interest rate with 15 years of repayment period and 4 years of grace period. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Health Ministry will continue to take its core services to outer islands and remote areas for Fijians facing difficulty in accessing these services in urban centers. Surgical Registrar Dr. Sela Komaimbole says the government remains committed to improving the health and well-being of every Fijian. Dr. Komaimbole represented the Health Ministry during a week-long tour spearheaded by the United Nations and various arms of the government to several islands in the Lao group. Josaina Nunga reports. During this tour, the health team managed to screen 60 Fijians and operated on 43, while three patients went through major operations. It has been a wonderful and humbling experience. You get to see the, the roots of where people, some of the people of Fiji come to the, the main hospitals. Parents of young boys in Como village welcome the services provided by the ministry. We are really grateful for the health services being brought to our doorstep. Normally, we spend over $500 to bring our boys to Suva to be circumcised. This is a great relief for us as the service is done without any cost. The health ministry is working towards improving its facilities in the Lao group. Still a need for improvement, eh? basically for the basic stuff and then going on to the, you know, out in the islands probably a, a major thing is uh, the boat. Eh? The ministry is boosting its mentoring program for new nurses and other health workers deployed to rural and maritime zones. The province has also been commanded for its continuous effort in combating communicable diseases over the years. Chosai Yenanunga, FBC News. Up ahead, river erosion affects village. And $8.2 million investment at Lopoka Port. Our radio Fiji boat, our radio Fiji roast
रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन The family of Faiz Ali who was allegedly murdered at his home in New Zealand yesterday is still in a state of shock. Speaking to FBC News at their residence in San Beto Nandi today, the victim's elder brother Tashlim Ali says they're still trying to accept the tragic news. Christchurch police were called to the victim's flat at around 7:35 p.m. yesterday following reports of a serious assault. Witnesses claim they saw a man covered in blood carrying a hammer fleeing the scene and a man fitting his description was later arrested. Faiz Ali has been described by his family members as joyful, loving and a caring person. The heartbreaking incident has added more sorrow to the family who lost their father exactly a month ago. Faiz was always in contact with his family in Fiji and usually came down to visit them. What can I express that? hard for us to hear that he's no more the time my my brother in law told me that you got to have to be strong we want to tell you something about faisali i got to know that there's something wrong and then suddenly he said that he got murdered oh i was just thinking of that how would i able to tell my mom that he's no more because he's still going i mean she's still going uh, through big pain that my father is no more and uh, it's it's hard Philip and I also visited the family in morning this afternoon and joins us live now. Philip, what else have you learned about the victim? Yes, I tell you, it's a very bleak day for the family after receiving the tragic news of Faiz Ali. Faiz Ali had moved to New Zealand back in 2014 and worked as a manager at the Crazy Price Mart in Christchurch. The 33-year-old also before moving across Uh, owned a hairdressing salon here in Nandi and was a very well-known person and as uh, described by many as a hum- humble respectful and very friendly he also attended the uh, Nandi Muslim uh, college here and also was originally from Masi Masi in in Sambeto Faiz Ali was uh, also according to his brother rather that uh, after their father had passed away last month Faisali had sent some money just last week to help in the ongoing prayers for their dad however little did they know that the same money that he had sent would be used for his funeral prayers back here in Sambeto Faisali is survived by his son and daughter who are aged 5 and 9 respectfully Thank you Felipe In the midst of growing challenges posed by frequent natural disasters, a small village in the province of Naitasiri continues to show resilience. Wuni Wuni village is home to over 200 families and for many years they've been grappling with the effects of flooding. However, as Jeshulal reports, these villagers continue to do what they can to mitigate risks of flooding. Following tropical cyclone Ana, Muninyon Ruvu village experienced severe flooding that caused soil erosion. There were three homes that needed to be moved inland as the edge of the village started slipping away into the river bank from continuous rain and we have assisted families to move and repair homes. We have also been in touch with authorities and are still waiting any assistance they can provide. These villages have come together to make a difference in the lives of their children and other communities. What keeps us going at this point is we work together as one unit or big family. Where someone needs food, we get together to help out. And we also see it to be remain proactive in terms of trying to mitigate the challenges that comes with the frequent flooding we face. Other than flooding, the people of Unini and Ruvu who still use a pan to get to the main road are worried about the risks that come with the eroding of land around their village. They are hopeful that authorities who have visited them will provide the much needed assistance in a timely manner. Jeshulal, FBC News. Traditional leaders on Kandavu are hoping to engage religious teachings to help deal with the drug war on the island. During the Mbosini Bono over the weekend, police revealed that the cultivation of marijuana on the island is increasing and based on their recent findings, more people are getting involved. 
More than 17,000 marijuana plants have been uprooted from Kandavu so far this year and police are seeking help from the Vanua. Majority of the villages found planting marijuana are young and need to be directed on the right path and we believe religion can do that. Proper values need to be implemented. Chunanawa Kalukalu, the Tuina Devo and also chair of the meeting, said villagers continue planting marijuana because it's easy money. The desire to have a comfortable and luxurious lifestyle is what drives people to keep planting marijuana because you harvest it within three months compared to Yangona, which is three years. Last year alone, police uprooted more than 67,000 plants worth an estimated $113.6 million from various villages in Kandavu. Already this year, two police teams have been deployed to conduct raids. Just in January alone and now February, two police teams were deployed here. The first team uprooted 1,730 marijuana plants, and the second team uprooted 16,029 plants. So far, now 17,742 plants in total, worth of $28.6 million. The meeting also discussed issues of climate change, the well-being of villages, rehabilitation programs, preservation of natural resources, and vacant chiefly titles. Kelly Vathala, FBC News. The $8.2 million investment in a new container yard for the port of Lotoka will increase its storage capacity. The new facility will also be critical to enhancing Fiji's hub status in the Pacific. Details with Philippe Naikaso. This new development will cater for current trade and transportation needs with ample room for expansion. We need to invest in increasing the volumes we can accommodate in terms of cargo, uh, cleaner and greener services, and where possible, digital transformation. The Yard 3 development will improve the condition of the running surface. It will be elevated so that operations are not affected during high tide and heavy rain. Once complete, it will not only increase the container storage capacity, but extend the yard service life by 30 years. Having a container yard of high standards will mean that containers exported from Fiji will be cleaner and be absent of soil and dirt that is commonly a biosecurity hazard. The tender has been awarded to the China Railway First Group and work is expected to be completed in eight months. Container port is a national trade development and the necessary condition to participate in the economic globalization is also a symbol of a national modernization construction. This new yard, once completed, will be able to hold an additional 1,260 containers as the Lotoka port can hold a capacity of 40,000 units. Philip and I, Caso, FBC News. We now join Kelly with business. Things coming up. Kandavu villages go cashless. And young entrepreneur searches for new markets. Stay with us. Bula FM, number two and seri. Punise Village has made Kandavu the first maritime island to adopt the cashless payment system through Vodafone's M-Pesa QR. With no banks on the island and access to cash a challenge, the advanced shop in Vunisea is the first business to launch the system. With the post office having strict opening hours, these villagers usually struggle to obtain cash. It's about helping us manage our finances, making sure it's secured and save costs. That will save you money, save you time, secure your, your money as well. You don't have to carry cash around here and there. Vodafone's head of e-commerce, Shalendra Prasad, says the m QR system allows people on the island to access more services. Making sure that everybody moves together. 
you know, not one community in Viti Levu or, or Banwa Levu only is looked after, whilst the rest of the people aren't. So these kind of services are very, very important. The Rokotui Kandabu says they are fortunate to start off the initiative. Uh, this actually comes uh, beside financial literacy and, uh, and um, assist and support the community members in actually um, uh, going towards the uh, savings uh, and investments uh, of uh, the cash that they receive in the island. The system is an important part of digital finance infrastructure that can help villagers engage in an ever more digitalized economy. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Sydney for from HFC Bank joins us now from the trading world. Good evening. A quick look at trades on the South Pacific Stock Exchange last week. There were 71 transactions involving about 445,000 shares of 12 listed securities with a value of $520,000. The market capitalization for the week recorded a slight fall of 0.13% and concluded at $3.43 billion. Meanwhile, the U.S. dollar fell to a three-year low against its Australian counterpart and stumbled near a three-year low against the British pound, encouraging investors to take a chance on other riskier currencies. The greenback also slipped to a three-year low against the Kiwi dollar as traders sought currencies with close ties to the global commodities trade due to its improving economic outlook. That's all for now from HFC Bank, Naka. Here are the local exchange rates for the Fiji dollar. As said early this morning, our dollar was on the rise against major international currencies today, gaining on the Chinese yuan, the U.S. greenback, the euro and the Japanese yen. However, against regional currencies such as those of Australia, New Zealand and PNG, it showed a decline. The commodities market was on the rise. Oil price rose to over $59 a barrel. Gold climbed to 1784 per ounce and silver closed up at $27.57 an ounce. Despite the harsh economic conditions, a young entrepreneur is able to defy all odds to earn a living for her family. 25-year-old Rosalyn Tutitu started her honey sales business one year ago following difficulties brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. Tutitu, who is originally from Savu Savu, has diversified her business and makes other products such as honey sticks and beeswax. Honey comes all the way from Bua. Um, and then we have a storage unit in Pacific Harbor where the buckets have been tested, well, everything's tested before. And that is business for tonight. Jamie joins you up next with sports. Thank you and good evening. Ahead in sports, fifth CVC title for Lombasa. And LMSI's Vodafone Trophy. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Ini from Raki Raki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. The Lombasa football team has dedicated its Pile Garments champion versus champion title win to the people of Vanua Levu who are still recovering from the impact of the two recent cyclones. The victory is special for the Mbamba Singh Alliance as it's not only brought smiles to the faces of their fans but it's also their mentor's first win as a coach. Tali Matairukula reports. These players poured their heart and soul in the game as they battled to give something back to their families and fans. It proves that we are strong. We will not be just uh, going down in any circumstances. They played their hearts out. Uh, the flood affected a lot of people in Lambasa. So this goal is for them. Because this is really affected by the cyclone and I believe. This is what the Lambasa team can <coughs> give back to them, uh, back to families who have been affected back at home. The team hopes the win can be a beacon of hope for the people of Vanuelevu. We cannot rebuild uh, everything just in one day, but this win tells us that we will go back and uh, rebuild whatever we have lost. 
and it's inspiration and hope for all the people of Vanuatu. Lambasa now has five CVC series titles under their name, winning the first in 1992, 2007, 2018 and 2020. The Bambasinga Lions have now diverted their focus towards the National League that kicks off on Saturday. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports. The pressure is on for Coca-Cola Games defending girls champion Andy Dakambao School heading into the zone meet and Fiji finals. Only a handful of athletes from the 2019 winning team are still with the school as some have moved on for further, further studies. Athletics coach Antonio Rambo Liku says the onus is on the younger athletes to showcase their potential. However, he says this is a challenge as most of them have not experienced national level competition. The thing is that we have our sub juniors and juniors that they haven't run in the Coca-Cola Games in any time because of the pandemic last year. This year again, this is the first time. Eh? So this is a big challenge for us to make sure that they step up to the level that we expect them to be. As one of the dominant figures of secondary schools, rugby league, Lelin Memorial School is gunning for top honours this year. The Ndabu Levu Brigade started off the season on a high, thrashing Lomai Vuna Secondary 40 points to 10 in the first round of its zone competition. Caroline Itavi with the details. Despite a win against Lomai Vuna last Saturday, head coach Uleyasi Vakataokula knows a lot of areas still need improvement in the team. To improve on our defense, the legacy of our place, uh, which is like concentration on the last. Uh, Quarter of the game. When it comes to rugby league, the boys from the Vilevu know it's anyone's game. Uh, game of uh, rugby league, uh, we are there to win in all aspects of the game, on and off the field. Uh, I don't believe that uh, it will not be a threat. One of the greatest challenges for the Lili inside is going up against rivals Ratu Kandavalevu School and Queen Victoria School. The boys and I were preparing to win the rugby league this year for the under-19. And uh, I think the rival team is uh, Arkias and QVS, so we know we can do it. Lilin last won the Fiji Secondary School's Rugby League Under-19 title in 2017 and will be back to end their four-year drought. Carly Nitavi, FBC Sports. Fiji Outrigger's first V6 marathon competition for 2021 started on a high over the weekend. Teams from around the country gathered in Nandi for the first meet since the onset of the pandemic. Felipe Naikaso has more. The first marathon regatta organized by Fiji Outriggers in Nandi Bay was also able to generate economic activity for the Jet Set town. We wanted to bring it to the west to also help the local communities here in Nandi, seeing that they were the most that were affected from COVID. Uh, so we've got teams from around the country. Uh, from Nosori uh, and of course Suva Raiwanga, Lamy as well. It was one of the biggest competitions hosted so far with the excitement evident among the participants. Four new clubs also joined the tournament. Nandi Bay has kind of been in um, hibernation mode uh, for the last couple of years so we've really uh, come together and I think COVID has actually brought us together and we've been paddling since we were allowed to um, to uh, safely paddle. So three marathons, then we have business houses, we have two months of business houses, and then we have another, then we go into our sprint season. So we have another three weeks of uh, sprints, and then our national sprints, our which is, um, and we're trying to bring it here again. The plan now is to hold a competition every three weeks around the country, as there's a high interest from clubs to have local tournaments. Philip and Icaso, FBC Sports. Being away from the boxing scene for over 15 months, uh, former welterweight champion Joseph Quajo is ready to win his first title of the year. The 35-year-old will challenge uh, South Pacific Boxing Championship cruiserweight title holder Alibreti Kauyada next month. The Ghanaian national is relishing the chance to get back into the ring and has been working with sparring partners from the academy to get into top shape. I have nothing much to say, guys, you know, be ready, make sure I'm ready for March 20th with my team. And I'm playing with the wisdom in the Sam and Atul and my, my boxing academy boys. So they're pushing me hard for the March program. Novak Djokovic has opened up about the adversity he's faced in winning one of what he calls his most emotional Australian Open titles. 
The world number one says injury nearly derailed his attempt to continue his Melbourne dominance. But as this report indicates, the Serbian was just too good for Daniel Medvedev. Manchester City stretched its winning run in the English Premier League to 13 games and maintains its 10-point lead at the top after a 1-0 win over Arsenal today. The header from uh, Man City's Raheem Sterling, just 77 seconds into the game, gave City the much-needed three points. In play of the day, we head to the NBA and it's uh, Terry Rozier hitting a 20-foot game-winning buzzer beater to give the Hornets the two points win over the Warriors. That's it from Sports Tonight in New Media. Apple launches new vaccine emoji. This and more coming up. Hello here, Tawa. We love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. A weak frontal system to the north is gradually moving away from Fiji as a high-pressure system to the south directs strong easterly winds over the group. In the west today, it was mainly clear skies and sunshine. From Pacific Harbor to Suva, skies were generally cloudy with some scattered showers during the day. In the north, overall a fine day with a few brief showers. At sea, 20 to 25 knots, easterly winds are generating rough sea conditions. Turning to the tides, the next high tide is at 3.32 a.m., followed by low tide at 9.19 a.m., sunrise is at 6.01. Tomorrow is expected to see mainly clear skies over most of Fiji. Outlook for Wednesday, the good weather continues. In Fijian Pulse, we asked, do you think the current roadwork is up to par? My point of view regarding the uh, roadworks that's going on, it's actually good, but it would be better if uh, they would use uh, another quality of the materials they're using so that uh, we don't face the same problem again. The current uh, road condition that is uh, done uh, in a uh, process, I think it's good to be done. Certain areas of road work is really good, but in other areas it gets bad easily. I believe these road works that we're having recently is good. Scientists in Colorado have cloned an endangered ferret. Recapping our main stories, police officers suspected of planting drugs bailed, shooting videos on buses threat to safety, and government signs multi-million dollar loan with Japan. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, last week we asked, is Roy Krishna the best football player to ever come out of Fiji? 55% answered yes. This week we're asking, do you believe the road work being undertaken is up to par? Visit our FBC website to answer. On to our shot of the day. This one comes from Savu Savu, sent in by Divek Gander of Wunikoka. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, fpcnews at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts, including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's your news for this evening. Until tomorrow, Wadimanda. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.